Okay, we have a big, big topic tonight, guys. This video is going to be a dark, dark journey into the underbelly of what is happening with Balenciaga. All right, so for those of you who are with me, this is going to be absolutely crazy. All right, we're going to be discussing Balenciaga and the recent ad scandals that have been taking place over the past year or so. If you guys have seen videos, this one's going to be way different, okay? I want to say that viewer discretion is advised because, honestly, guys, I did not want to make this video. This video, when you really dig into what's happening in this fashion industry, it is utterly dark. It is utterly chaotic. But I felt compelled from what I was shown and what I've seen to share this information with you. So strap in, get your favorite snack. You might not want to have a snack for this one because it's going to get real ch stomach churning. Um, yeah, we're going to be looking at Balenciaga. We're going to be looking at why I believe specifically this is bail worship that's happening within the industry. So without further ado, let's get into it. I want to show you guys this video. Okay. I have... And as a photographer, as a photographer that's worked with many brands in the fashion industry, I'm, I'm utterly horrified and I'm angry. I know how many steps you go through as a photographer to get the client to approve images. I know how many adult eyes have to look at images for them to be printed, especially for a retail campaign where you're selling the product online. This gift shop shoot by Balenciaga is abhorrent and those babies those children who were not protected. I don't know where the parents were, but I do know that those children were not protected so you could sell your products. Okay, we're going to get into specifically what he's talking about here because it's really, really dark. This It's terrible what he's talking about. I want to understand or I want you guys to understand what Balenciaga actually means. If you've seen videos on this, I'm going to pull this up right here. If you go to Google Translate, let's share this tab and you type in Balenciaga. Let me make sure you guys can see it on the screen. You get do what you want. That is Balenciaga. That is the literal translation of, of the name from Latin into English. And to those who know what this term do what you want actually means, it is the satanic creed or also known as the satanic mandate. Okay, so we look right here. Do what thou wilt. That is the satanic mandate that was given by Aleister Crowley, also popularized by Anton LaVey. These are all black magic practitioners that have been practicing this black magic occultism and have been just protruding this all over our society. We see even Jay-Z is a part of this. We also see that the Beatles, um, there's a quote right here. The whole Beatles idea was to do what you want, do what thou wilt, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. That's John Lennon. Okay, so absolutely nuts. If we go back to the Google Translate to look at Balenciaga specifically, let's get this back up for you guys. So that is what Balenciaga translates to. Now, if we translate this, I want you guys to see this. If we actually put in bail as the beginning, okay, you take away the L and then reduce the space right here. You get bail is the king. Y'all, they are not hiding this. This is not something that they are hiding. Balenciaga is specifically designed for the worship and the subjugation of this Baal deity, this ancient Baal deity. We're going to get into exactly what Baal is specifically later, but that is the name of Balenciaga. Now, when we look at the satanic mandate that was given, okay, by specifically the satanic church, um, we're actually going to look at a few details. Um, let's look at Thelema, okay? So Thelema, for those who don't know, let's pull this up is a part of the ancient, sorry guys, I'm having a, I think I must have not have shared the screen. Give me just one sec, guys. I knew this was gonna happen. See, we're, we're already getting attacked in the, in the beginning of the video. Make sure to pray that there's no technical issues that happen because we're, we're exposing darkness deep. So anyway, you wanna look at Thelema, okay? This is, um, it is a Western esoteric and occult spiritual or, or or, or sorry, social or spiritual philosophy. It's a new religious movement founded in the early 1900s by Aleister Crowley. He's going to be a big, a big head in this conversation as we move on. Okay, so Thelema, um, he identified himself, this is Crowley, as a prophet of the new era in humanity spiritual development. Okay, um, he worships specifically the Thelemic pantheon, which is a collection of gods and goddesses who either literally exist or serve as symbolic archetypes or metaphors including a number of deities. Primarily, this is important, 
a trio adapted from the ancient Egyptian religion. All right. These are the gods of Newt, Hadit, and Rahor Kuit. Probably butchering those names, but he, this do what thou will, this Balenciaga connection is bringing us back to the ancient deities of the past, uh, to the ancient Egyptian pantheon. And we know that Baal actually was previous the uh, Egyptian pantheon. So we're going to get into that. But I thought that that was interesting to share with you guys. But let's look at what what this ad scandal actually is. Okay, because this is where the darkness really starts to creep in. All right, so let's get this up. When we look at the ad scandal, it really seems to um, be related to child exploitation. Okay, now this, if, if you guys are not willing to have this conversation, please jump off now because this is where it starts to get dark. When we look at these pictures right here, this is the ad campaign that Balenciaga was pushing this last summer. You specifically see that there are children, specifically young young girls, holding this bear. Okay, and this bear is significant because if you look at how they're holding it, and even in, in the picture on the left, there is a BDSM um, object that she is holding. This bear is a representation of BDSM. Now, for those who don't know what BDSM is, Please go look it up because I can't even talk about it in this video. I'll probably get taken down. But BDSM is a sensual practice, for lack of a better term, that for some reason they decided to have these kids within their ad campaigns wield this BDSM object. Now, whoever did this is absolutely, I don't know what's going on in their heads, but obviously I believe that this was planned and intentional. But again, we look at this image. These two little girls are holding this BDSM bear. Okay, now we dig even deeper into this. Let's look at what the article says. Okay, in case you guys don't, don't believe what I'm saying. Luxury fashion brand Balenciaga is facing flack on social media after a new ad campaign featured children in bondage-themed toys, which have been deemed as inappropriate and disturbing by several users. Images of the new campaign, which have gone viral on Twitter, feature young child models holding teddy bears that appear to have bondage gear. Absolutely nuts. A Twitter user who goes by the username DatCatDur, nice, posted two screenshots from the Balenciaga official website showing off images of little girls holding teddy bears, which appear innocent at first, except they are not. Okay, we've seen these pictures. Here they are again. This Twitter post says, Balenciaga using photos of little girls playing with teddy bears dressed in bondage gear on their website. Lovely. Okay. So Twitter users, this is where the controversy is coming in, y'all, where this it, uh, it's been a whole controversy from the beginning. Twitter users have called out the campaign and have been slamming the brand while questioning the appropriateness of the photos featuring the bondage teddy bears. One user wrote, frightening how many adults must have been involved in this. Parents, photographers, creative directors, copywriters, web designers, design agency staff, producers, managers, and advertisers. Not one of them thought, hang on a minute. I mean, really think about that, guys. If they literally have a BDSM object with this little girl and all of these ad managers, these campaign managers decided not to do anything about it, I think that's a total lie. I think all of them knew exactly what was going on, okay? Because this isn't even the only ad that we see. Let's move on to this picture right here. If I, if I um, share this tab, this is the same picture. Let's move on to this Twitter post. Uh, this Twitter post right here says Balenciaga is giving some unsettling vibes. Okay, let me pull this up. So we see this picture right here. We have another little kid. He has this like, looks like he has kind of like a red balloon on his face. I'm not sure if I can pull that up directly. Hopefully you guys can see it. But again, this child in a separate ad is holding this BDSM teddy bear. Okay, now here's where it gets wild. Here's where the rabbit hole starts to kind of dig even deeper is look at the photo on the right. Okay. The photo on the right is a purse, one of the Balenciaga purses. But if you look where the arrow is, I'll kind of put my cursor right here in case you're missing it. There is actually paperwork that is beneath this purse. Now, many Twitter users, including myself, have actually zoomed in on what this paperwork is actually saying. And we're going to read what exactly this paperwork says because it's really, really creepy. It's honestly just creepy. So we, we move down. Um, let's move over to this section. Try to keep this organized for you guys. Let's move over to this video right here. 
can't even display these images because they are just grotesque. They portray violence. They portray what looks like, you know, uh, I suppose I can say this word, some kind of cannibal nature. Um, yeah, it, it's dark. It's really dark. And because he's actually got children in this painting, that's what makes it all the more worse as well, that these are kids that are portrayed in these paintings. And then there's also, also images like with children that looks like they're wearing hoods, like in some kind of hooded suits. It looks like sort of like a cult sort of stuff. Wow, like it's freaky wild. stuff. Like this is the stuff that was like giving me nightmares. I think it was like just really disturbing for me. So even though that's not exactly the book that was there, um, he – it's still him. It's the same artist. So Balenciaga has put in their photo shoot this book quite clearly, deliberately placed there that is extremely dark and morbid. And this was specifically placed there. Now, the. Yeah, they're specifically placing these dark demonic images into these ad campaigns with these children. Now, I want us to look at this one very specific ad that is very similar to the rest, however, is different in many ways. And this is going to connect it to the bail practices that I said were taking place earlier. So go ahead and watch this video and then we'll discuss. Look at the spelling of Balenciaga on the rug. B-A-L-E-N-C-I-A-G-A. -A -A. On the hat, B-A-L-E-N-C-I-A-G-A. -A -A. But when you look over here on the tape, what is this? B-A-A-L. Look at that. Look at that. That is the most obvious connection I have seen. If you look on the tape, the, the, the spelling on the rug is the normal spelling. It's B-A-L-E-N-C-I-A-G-A. -A -A. Whereas the tape has bail. All right. It literally says bail right here. Why are they doing this? Again, every single photo shoot has to have multiple producers, has to have multiple designers and directors. And none of them and all of them just thought, oh, let's have this tape in here that says bail. Guys, wake up. There is a reason this is happening. Now... Let's uh, let's actually continue this video, and then I'm going to show you what Kim Kardashian did specifically with this. B A A L. Do you know how much budget these companies have for a product promotional shoot? Do you know how many people are on set positioning every item exactly how they want it? That was not done by accident. But just to make sure, I tried to find the tape placed anywhere else in the photo, and it was. It was placed on the chair, and the tape on the chair has been deliberately positioned in a way that the beginning of the word Balenciaga is not shown. The rest of the word is all over the place, but B-A-A-L on the tape is not shown anywhere on the chair. It's mockery. It's absolute mockery to show absolute you- Absolute mockery, absolute, just demonic. It's just demonic. The whole thing top to bottom is just crazy. This is why when you connect Bale back to the beginning, it has to do with child sacrifice, child exploitation. And now it's impacted our culture and they're literally just flaying it out there for everybody to see. Okay. Now I want us to move on to essentially what happened was there was a whole lot of backlash with all of this and Balenciaga actually took most of the ad campaigns down and they issued an apology. And this was the picture right here. If you guys are still following me, this is the picture right here that they, they posted after the apology was taken. Okay. Now, I want you guys to look closely at this picture because um, uh, this picture right here, this picture looks pretty much innocent. Like when you first look at it, it's like, okay, this is like a normal picture. She's, she has her feet on the table. Doesn't really matter. But if you zoom in, you zoom in on the right side, there's actually a book. The, the book that's placed on the bottom, this guy, his name, let me get him up right here. His name is Michael Bormans. Okay. Uh, excuse me, guys. I think I just stopped sharing. He is a uh, a German artist, and he's also a German author. His name is Michael Bormans, and he has wrote um, kind of a billion kind of occultic type literatures, and he's also a painter. Let's look at some of the paintings that he has. Okay, viewer discretion is advised. Again, let's look at some of his paintings. What is going on here, guys? what is happening is i mean is anybody seeing like all of this occult ritualistic like like look at this one right here this is one of his paintings it is literally an occultic ritual taking place all right we like look at all of these just weird demonic images this one right here looks like there's children sitting around huddled in a corner doing god knows what <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's all connected. It's all mockery. It's all paganism. It's all flashing it in our face, showing us that the fashion industry is completely infiltrated with Baal worship. All right. This is something that we need to be taking seriously within our day. Now, that book, again, that book that was on the table with the ad campaign for Balenciaga is called The Cree Master Cycle. That book is known as The Cree Master Cycle. And again, you look up what this book is and you see all of this weird imagery. Like what's going on right here? Like somebody get in the comments and explain what exactly this is. I I have no idea. Uh, David says face green smiling. I don't know what's happening. But that's where I talk. They're doing it for fame and fortune. We look at some of uh, some of uh, these other weird pictures in here. Like this one right here. This guy looks like a goat. Like he looks like he's some weird hybrid creature. Really just strange. Really just, just off the wall strange. And that is why everybody is so up in arms with what's happening with Balenciaga. And we've, we're seeing all these connections come out. The truth is being exposed. People are beginning to see what is going on. Now, let's actually look at the Summer 23 collection for Balenciaga. Okay, this is going to be the Summer 2023 collection. This was before everything went down. Zabe, my brother, says, is this live? This is live. So go ahead and ask any questions you guys have down below. But let's look at what's uh, what the runway was like in 2023. I mean, really just odd. Like, look at this guy. He looks like a demonic, and like, he looks like he's a zombie. I don't know why they have them walk in this, like, demonic, weird way. <laughs> Our culture is done. We are judged. Now, quickly i mean this is kind of funny to look at but i want us to look at there's a couple concerning um there's some concerning models in here that i want you guys to see um yeah so like this guy right here if you guys noticed look at this guy he's holding a baby carrier and he's he's holding one of those carriers that like you would see mothers holding their babies with and he's holding a bag we're going to see this six times throughout this fashion runway, and I'm going to show you why this has a cult significance, okay? Um, we're going to see this multiple times with multiple models. Yep, you see he has that holder. Let's see, yeah, here's another man that has that baby holder holding a bag. This guy's doing the exact same thing. Wait for him to pop up. Look at him. Baby holder bag. We've seen this three times. Now, why is this important? Let's let's wait for this guy. Okay. So now there was a video that came out um actually just recently. Let me pull this up for you. We'll get into what Kanye West has to say about this because it's pretty wild. But let's look at this video of one of the male models that was actually caught with his bag. Look what they found inside the bag. Okay, viewer discretion is advised. Disgusting. What's in your bag? In the bag, uh, like a shop or maybe. This is like... Should we do a what's in your bag? Can you yeah, can we do a what's in the bag, please? Should I hold it for you and you can take things out? Excuse me. Yeah. Look. Okay, so look. So, like, so hold uh, on. Let's back up a second. So... He he got caught. L look at what was in the bag. Uh, like, Somebody tell me what this is. What's, What's in your bag? In my bag? What is that? <laughs> to me, it looks like blood. You know what I mean? And all of these male models had this bag. And you actually see he's he tries to get away from the guy and he covers it up with a bunch of other weird objects. Watch what uh, he does. Like, stop <laughs> this is like, should we do a what's in your bag? Yeah, see, he's, he's yeah, trying to get away Yeah, can we do a what's in the bag, please? Should I hold it for you and you can take things out? Excuse me. Yeah. Look, yeah. This, it's like a, I don't know what's going on. Like when she starts to dry. This is really concerning. This is a like, in there. When, when she gonna pee, it's got all of these uh, then, supplies uh, for children. She's boring. Uh, she's boring. 
So this is just honestly gut-wrenching to the point of almost not even being watchable. Why are these Balenciaga models holding bags of blood and, you know, have these baby carriers when all of the Balenciaga models are linked to these weird occult practices? The Cree Master Cycle. We even looked at Michael Borison, this occultic painting. Ball meaning Baal is king. I mean, is anybody seeing what I'm seeing? What, what are your guys' thoughts? Uh, Jay Green says Serpent's Tongue is on the NASA logo. I think he's referring to my shirt. Yeah, this is crazy. Jay Green says wearing a NASA shirt. Biggest lie propagated against mankind. Look up Operation Hide. Okay, we're not going to get into that. I don't believe in a flat earth. I'm not into this. I'm just wearing the shirt because I bought it. Okay. Well, uh, maybe I can answer some of those questions later. But yeah, guys, just utter, utter darkness. Now, how does this have to do with Bale? Okay, so we see all of this weird stuff happening. Who is Bale? Okay, that's really the key question here. Um, let's pull this up for you guys. So Bale was the god worshipped in many ancient Middle Eastern communities, especially among the Canaanites. Very important. Mark that down in your head. Uh, he was considered the fertility deity. Interesting. And one of the most important gods in the pantheon. So the Semitic noun Baal, which in Hebrew is Baal, ba uh, sometimes it's it's pronounced Baal, but a lot of times uh, it, it's pronounced Baal, uh, meant the owner or the Lord. Okay. Although it could be used more generally, for example, a bale of wings was a winged creature. In the, pl in the plural form, it's Balim of arrows, indicated archers. Yet the fluidity and the use of the term Baal did not prevent it from being attached to a god of distinct character okay ball was designated the universal god of fertility and in that cap uh, capacity his title was prince and the lord of the earth he was also co called the lord of the rain and dew and um yeah so he is the for the ancient fertility god of the canaanites this is why this is all linked back to the child exploitation the child sacrifices within these pagan rituals okay it's all connected throughout history now i want to show you uh this guy or i want to show you um, an interesting thing I came across. Um, it says right here, the myths also tell of Baal's struggle to obtain a place comparable in grandeur to those of other gods. So Baal persuaded Asherah to intercede with her husband El, the head of the pantheon, to authorize the construction of a palace, the god of arts and crafts, the god of arts and crafts. Okay, this is all linked to the fashion industry. Um, then he was proceeded to build the, the ball, the most beautiful of palaces, which spread over the area of 10,000 acres. The myth may refer in part to the destruction of Baal's own temple in the city of Ugarit. All right. It's all connected. Now, remember how we said this was connected to the ancient, how the do what thou wilt, Aleister Crowley, black magic, uh, Thelema practices are connected back to the Egyptian pantheon. Listen to this. Um, the worship of, of Baal was popular in Egypt from the later New Kingdom in about 1400 BCE to the end of 1075 BCE through the influence of the Aramaeans who borrowed the Babylonian pronunciation Bel. That's Bel, the god Bel. This god ultimately became known as the Greek god Belos identified with Zeus. It is all connected. Baal became the god Bel. This was before in, um, you know, in Egypt. He was also known as, as another god and he became Zeus. OK, that is what it's the same thing. It's throughout the time of human history. Satan has been, you know, Baal. He's been Zeus. He's been, you know, the ancient god of Rome. It's all connected, guys. So that is essentially what Balenciaga did. They basically had these these children in these ad campaigns, which they took down. They were having these weird BDSM things. And that is essentially what happened. So it is, it is disgusting. It is terrible. I hope that this doesn't happen again, because if it does, we as the church need to band together and we need to stop this from happening because it is complete and utter darkness. So let's get a couple questions from you guys. Faye Jones says, child blood, especially males, is the most powerful ball. Satan requires it. I don't believe blood has anything to do with it. I think that that's just a myth. Satan doesn't get power because somebody sacrifices blood to him, right? He gains power by people believing in him and by acting towards him. It has nothing to do with the blood. Um, the innocence of the children is what they are really after. That is true. They want to take the innocent, 
okay? Especially what um, you, you'll notice a lot of these pictures and paintings that we saw ex are exploiting young boys, young males. They are trying to, to change the gender roles within our society, and they are doing this through the means of the fashion industry. Tale as old as time. This is what happened in Rome. This is what happened in Babylon. Um, half tactical. So David says, crazy brother, very crazy enough said. I need my shower now. God bless you for joining, brother. Appreciate it. All false gods are technically Satan. I don't believe that, brother. I believe the chief heads of the gods, which, you know, Baal, Bell, all of these chief heads are Satan. But I believe there are lesser demons, you know, and, uh, you know, Corinthians, it talks about how there are the princes of the powers of the air. There are authorities, there are rulers, there are dominions. There is a hierarchy of angels and demons. And so a lot of these lesser gods, like take, for instance, Hermes, the messenger god, or take, for instance, any of these lesser gods within the pantheons are lesser demons. And they have specific roles, according to the Bible. Deuteronomy 32, God essentially divided the nations according to the sons of God. Many people think this says the sons of Israel, but it in fact says the sons of God, meaning the demonic princes of the air. Okay. Uh, Pavel says Zeus was a powerful demon. Amen. So yeah, that's that's Balenciaga in a nutshell. Now let's look at some reactions to this. I want to look up some videos. Um, let's look at what she actually has to say. She's one of, go check out her channel. Her name is Purse on Fleek. She gives you a really good detailed ex expose on what's going on. Um, let's look at this. I want to now go on to what I was saying, I have said a few times already in this, is there is a creative uh, stylist. So there is another kind of like side person to Demna. The main stylist for Balenciaga since 2014, her name is Lotta Volkova, okay? So um, there's actually quite a few articles that kind of reference her. Lotta Volkova appears to be very twisted. She has, um, let's say, demonic, uh, images on her Instagram. She has wow. images that. that show what look like very young boys. Wow. Looks like one of the heads, the chief heads of Balenciaga is again, a Satan worshiper is again, this occultic practitioner. Guys, wake up, wake up. This is happening before our very eyes. Absolutely nuts. Um, she also has this part where she's filmed at a juvenile facility for the Vediments campaign, and there's something that looks like there's you were discussion the advice. Like you were there are advised. the disturbing images associated with children. Um, she clearly likes teddy bears, so there's a lot of teddy bear attributes in her Instagram. Now, let me just say also as well, her Instagram uh, has been turned onto private. So of there, but there is a lot of photos that have come out from her Instagram before she, she turned it onto private. People have gotten a lot of her photos and this is where that credit goes to cur curious. Look at this right here. They intentionally put a red dot on this teddy bear of this woman's post. Wh where is that red dot? Where's that red dot? I think you can, uh, I think you can let your imagination take you wherever it wants to go. I know where that red dot is. Why do they have pictures on this? with one of the lead chief heads of Balenciaga, who is responsible for these children exploitative advertisements. Somebody tell me what is going on. Yes, Light on Twitter, who found out so much about, like, found a lot about her, just even with her photos and the kind of people that she's actually um, tagged in her photos. Okay, so I'm going to bring you to this attention of a photo that she had on her Instagram um, on October 2018. And um, it looks like, as you can see, it looks demonic, this image. And the hashtag is Moloch. So apparently this Moloch was an ancient pagan god that... Children were given to the pagan god for... Yeah, we're going to talk about this. So let's talk about Moloch because this is uh, a, a huge part of this conversation. Moloch was the... When we look at the ancient gods of, of, of um, you know, the Canaanites, there are three essential gods you need to know about. Jonathan Cain actually talks about this. It is called the Dark Trinity. You have the, the ancient possessor spirit known as Baal. You have um, Ashtaroth or also known as Aphrodite to the Greeks. Let me pull myself up real quick. She is known as um, Ishtar. She is Ishtar. She is the, the feminine goddess spirit within this ancient Canaanite philosophy. The third god is the ancient god Moloch. He is known as the destroyer. He is the one that led Israel and the, and the surrounding nations to sacrifice their children to 
Moloch. He was the destroyer god. Let's look at some pictures of uh, Moloch when we pull this up. I need to find a way to get the chat onto the screen so you guys can have your questions on the screen while I'm doing this. This is still like my second week of live streaming. So this is Moloch right here, guys. This is Moloch right here. This is the God, and, and we see right here in this image, he is the God that caused people to sacrifice their children. All right? So right here we read, The Bible contains many warnings against an abhorrent practice of the Canaanites who had previously possessed the land God gave to Israel. One such admission, you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Moloch. What does that mean, pass through the fire? That means you shall not burn your kids at the stake towards Moloch the God. Passing through the fire was an abominable practice in which people sought to appease the heathen god Moloch and seek his benefit by sacrificing their own children by fire. Who would have thought that this ancient heathen deity would so plainly rear his head in modern day Britain? Right here, a Channel 4 Dispatches episode in the United Kingdom exposing hospital heartache first aired Monday, March 24, 2014, revealing that many British hospitals are, no, are not only incinerating the remains of aborted or miscarried babies, as clinical waste, but are also burning some of those bodies as a means of heating their buildings in waste to energy programs. Wow. I I honestly didn't know that. That's shocking to me. That it seems like that came out in 2014. But you know, we're doing that in America. We this this Moloch spirit, this destroying spirit, is even getting into our judicial system. It's getting into our culture where we are literally sacrificing our children to this ancient pagan deity. If you thought this was only taking place in the Canaanite gods or in Israel, it's taking place today. Go ahead and check out Jonathan Cain if you want more in or information on the Dark Trinity, because he's really good. So let's see what you guys have to say. Yeah, Tyler says, wake up, people. Thank you, Tyler. Funky to, funky to me, but I agree. I'm struggling with anger. Let's get some questions about what you just heard. The Dark Trinity. Man, you got, I think you guys are mainly just commenting. I'm trying to get some actual questions about this. Really sickening stuff. Really sickening. It, it churns my heart to see all this, guys. But yeah, we know this, this dark trinity, this pagan influence has infiltrated our culture. Let's even look at the Arch of Baal that was announced um, in D.C. I think it was in 2018. So we look at the Arch from the Temple of Baal in D.C. Okay, this is on CBN. Look at this picture, guys. Look at this picture. Let me make sure this is up. Look at this picture. Where is this? This is in Washington, D.C. This is in the National Monument, the Washington Mall. They they introduced the Arch of Baal, where you're literally looking through the two towers, which is Freemasonic, for those who don't know, looking towards the, the seat of power in America. Okay? Let's read this. Um, get this back up. So a reconstruction of the ancient Arch of uh, Palmyra, Syria, was set up in Washington, D.C. last week to celebrate global heritage culture, according to the Institute for Digital Archaeology. The arch has been displayed at various locations around the world, including New York City, London, and Dubai. Guys, I'm trying to think of that Bible verse that talks about Mystery Babylon the Great, who, who has sway over the kings of the earth. This Arch of Baal is all over the place. However... Some are calling the structure the Arch of Baal, saying it is a spiritual significance. It was assembled and unveiled across the U.S. Capitol the day before Christine Blasey Ford, I don't know who that is, and Brett Kavanaugh testified before a Senate committee. Um, actually, I believe that was during the Brett Kavanaugh trials. Is that, am I thinking of that right? Um, Brett Kavanaugh was the dude, that judge that got kind of roasted didn't he because they were trying to oust him because he was the last republican judge so I, I i guess they're saying this happened during that during that time uh maybe i'll have to look that up in a second let's put this back up for you guys so yeah that's uh you know we see that according to the website breaking is real news in order to get to the temple of, of Baal in palamira a pagan would have had to have walked under the arch on the way in and walk under it again on the way out the original arch was destroyed by ISIS fighters in October of 2015. Good for them. <laughs> Jonathan Cain, the author of the book, The Paradigm, has pointed out that Baal was a power of, or a god of power, fertility, and child sacrifice. 
and that New York and Washington, D.C. are the two key cities behind abortion on demand in America. Baal is mentioned more times in the Bible than any other false deity. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. Let's see what he has to say. This is just, excuse me, guys. This is just really sad. <clears throat> Absolutely terrible. So this is what the connection is to Baal. What are some of the questions you guys have when it comes to to Baal? Thank you, Half Tactical, for putting this in the chat. Um, what are some of the questions you guys have, or what are some of the what are some of the thoughts that you guys are having uh, listening to this? Um, let's see what you guys have to say. May peace and blessings be with all of you guys. Thank you, Alexander. Appreciate that. Um, Rock says, hello, Sandra. Yeah, you guys are a little bit quiet today. I'm used to, I'm used to a lot of questions. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So honestly, just wild. I was trying to get this live stream to go for maybe like an hour, but we're kind of dragging a little bit. I'm trying to see if there's anything else on bail. Let's go ahead and bump this up right here. Get the screen up for you guys. I'm trying to see what else there is. And I shall take you. So we as the body of Messiah should not even mention the names of the false mighty ones. They are fallen. They are not the true Elohim. They are not Yahuwah. So we don't mention them by name. They don't even deserve for us to speak their names out of our mouths. That may answer the question for anyone who was thinking, why do I only spell the fallen ones names? Because I do not speak the names of the fallen ones. And yes, it is a commandment in Exodus 23, 13. And in that I have said to you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other gods, nor let it be heard from your mouth. So I'm going to listen to the Most High Yahuwah because I love him. If you are not led in the same way that I am, then I'm not going to condemn you. You are still my brother and sister in Messiah as long as you love the Most High Yahuwah with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. I want to show you guys this over here. We're going to go back to this wonderful woman who kind of enlightened me to what was going on. She has probably the best information, so go check her out. She is Purse on Fleek. Let's check this video out. I cannot believe that a brand has hired these kind of people in the name of art, is it? Because this is this to me is not art. Like This is outright like child ABE material, outright child PEOs. Like I know I sound silly by censoring everything, but I just don't want to get this video removed because I want you guys to see all this stuff. Like I want you guys to see as much content as possible and I want you to go down and look at those links. Um, there's also another thing that was found out that there's a photo of her um, with um, her, Karl Lagerfeld, um, and someone else as well. But she's actually, this Lotta Volkova is actually next to a guy called Gosha Rubitinsky. And this guy is actually, um, I'm not sure if he's been convicted, I don't know, but he's an alleged uh, PEO. Uh, you know I'm missing a letter there, right? That's that's what I'm saying when I'm saying PE gap O, okay? And there are some images here that show that he's trying to instigate with um, an underage boy. Okay, we're going to backtrack a wow, bit now. These are not exactly, these are not relative to the ad campaign, but these are all things that link into Demna, <laughs> Balenciaga, Venom, Walter Volkova, Jeffrey Epstein, Jean. She said, "She said this makes Sodom and Gomorrah look like Candyland." <laughs> that made me laugh. Honestly, I don't think so because Sodom and Gomorrah—they literally had uh, people coming out and like viscerally attacking people and going out to sodomize other people. I don't think we see that happening in New York City. You know what I'm saying? If that was happening. God would probably judge that city really quick. But yeah, they literally like, even when the angels came in to take Lot out of the city, they were trying to force into his house to do you know what. I can't say it, but do you know what. But that's a funny comment. So let's pull this back up here. Look, Bruno. Okay, so if you don't know these people, you're going to know about them, all right? Now, um, Thank you, Blake. Autumn Winter up, Blake? 15 doing, 16 buddy? runway show. Uh, Demna held a fashion show at Le Depot, which is a gay SE club. We got a new member in the house. We got Tinky Talk. What's up, Tinky Talk? Love you, buddy. Thanks for the uh, membership. Appreciate it. In the red light district. Now, you could perceive that as just art. Like, it's art, you know, going into an SE club to the whole fashion show. But what that says to me is there 
is already from a very early stage an obvious um, an obvious indication that Demna is quite uh, se okay, focused. I'm, I'm kind of lost. Like, I don't know if you guys are lost. I don't know what she's talking about here. Let's let's scroll back. Um, I buy this. It came from here. Demna or children, whether they're fake, a real especially. And then he pulls out like this some is kind that, of... uh, This is that back video we were talking about earlier. She gives more of her insight, so listen to this. Bring a Balenciaga bag that was supposed to pretend to look like some kind of baby bag. So on the runway, you don't really see much other than that. You just see the baby on the front, and then you see that baby, baby bag being carried by the male models only, okay? So I don't know if that's some kind of insinuation there. Um then there's some backstage footage where they're um, doing a like you know interview whatever with one of the models those, like chatting those. to the models asking to see like, what's in the bag and there's two models there there's the male and there's the female model and then he pulls that stuff out of the bag so he says you know he pulls out dummy um, you know for the, when the baby's crying that's what he kind of says um, and then he pulls out like some kind of rag and this is where it's really deeply disturbing it's a rag that he says, oh, when the baby's going to pee or something, that's what he says. But it looks like it's got blood on this rag. But to, I wanted to also note, because people are saying it looks like blood, the bag that he's carrying is red. So there's a possibility that with the reflections that the red is just coming off, like looking like it's on the rag, but it's not actually blood on, like fake blood on the on the rag. Maybe it's just a dark colored sort of thing like, or spew or something like that. But it does. Yeah, nobody knows why. I personally don't know why that's that happened. I don't know if they're doing that as some sort of ritual, pouring blood into the bag as some sort of, because, you know, they do these rituals live, you know, especially within the music industry, especially within all of these different, you know, areas of life. Um, I actually had a TikTok for, for a while talking about, you know, exposing Beyonce and I actually got banned because I, I exposed Beyonce, how she was representing the ancient pagan god of Oshun within her i think she she posted her lemonade album yeah i mean you can go to any of these big name people like beyonce jay-z they do these rituals live before everybody all the time you know it happened literally at the world cup for those who actually let's let's look at this um let's go ahead and move over to that bail statue because i think that really kind of epitomizes what we're talking about here so i think it was the eurovision uh the bail ceremony that took place go ahead and get this up for you guys thanks for standing in the chat pull this up for you guys real quick yeah i don't know why it's not showing up usually it shows up like right away but i'm challenged when it comes to pulling stuff up for some reason let's look at this eurovision 2023 bail See if that'll do the trick for us. What do y'all say in the chat? What are y'all saying in the comments? Do you agree with what I'm thinking or do you think I'm kooky? Eurovision 2023. Bale statue. Now, for those who haven't seen this video, this is essentially um they are mimicking the mystery Babylon religions within these, these videos. I, oh, for some reason I can't find it. Somebody post below. If you know of the Eurovision, uh, thing that happened, let's go ahead and share the screen real quick. All right, let's start from ground zero. Bale statue ceremony. Okay. This is it right here. Okay, so it's it's the Birmingham 2022. So it's the opening ceremony highlights for the Birmingham 2022. To Birmingham. Let's go ahead and watch it, guys. Look at this ceremony that's taking place. So you have the Tower of Babylon right here. You can see the, the Mystery Babylon Tower. 
they're they're performing uh some sort of water ritual on top of it just all sorts of weird weird stuff I mean, they look possessed. And there it is. The Bale statue moving towards the Mystery Babylon. To declare the 22nd Commonwealth Games open. Yeah. So hopefully I did my best within this live stream to prove and to show you guys how the Balenciaga, oh, excuse me, how the Balenciaga, all of it is related back to the ancient Canaanite god of Baal, okay, with the child exploitation, with the pagan rituals, with the connections to the Kareem Master Cycle, to all of these weird pagan occultic rituals, okay? Yeah, Kay says right here, wow, it is in our faces. Absolutely. It is right smack dab in front of our faces. Tiki Talk. New member says it was uh, frightening to see. My soul did not sit right when I saw that stuff. Um, the Commonwealth Games opening is always a satanic ritual. I'll probably get on live maybe in a couple days and do a video about that one specifically because a lot of people aren't really telling us exactly what's happening with that. But I think that's where we're going to end it, guys. Um, let's see. Hillbilly Preacher says, what about the opening ceremony of CERN? That's a very good, interesting point. But I'm going to go ahead and end this live right here, y'all. So have a blessed day. Remember, darkness is everywhere, but Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. Uh, turn to Jesus now because the end times is here. Love y'all. God bless you and peace.